your questions answered in yet another epic episode of Ask the Doctor. I do read all comments and I try to answer a lot of them, but sometimes I keep some questions for such a video. And these are the questions for today in Ask the Doctor episode something. Let's kick it. This is your fire warning! I do weird stuff on camera just for you Experimenting with chaos, that's what I do If it all blows up, that's just part of the plan Infotainment and it's caffeine in my hand Mom says bring snacks and don't make a fuss Plotting world domination, one word with us Doctor Hans Brewery I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery My channel about beer and homebrew And this is my friend Chewy I will try to timestamp every question So feel free to jump around so and if you have any more questions for me, drop them down below in the comments. Otherwise, you hit the thank you button. We do need something to drink for the video. And I was thinking that in the last video, I compared the sourdough cider versus this one made with a yeast, a yeast A01. And the editing doctor suggested that we would mix them. Just blend them. Call it fusion cider and let me get back to the edit. Why not? Let's pour some ciders. Speaking of ciders, one thing I never brewed is actually cider with cider yeast. And as that was a sponsored video, Angist actually said, you know, we do have cider yeast. And one of you suggested also that Saison yeast would be a pick for ciders. So thank you for your suggestion. Let's pour the ciders. Beautiful. If you haven't watched that video, I will link down below to that one. If you're interested in that, go I have separate videos and discount codes and yada yada yada, all linked down below. So, question number one. Should we give it a go before question number one? <sighs> Smells like apples to me. Cheers. It's nice. Thank you, editing doctor. Cheers. I did write your questions down, so they're not perfectly quoted, but they should be close enough. Question number one. This comes from the uh, video where I made this tower here. Can you see it? Let's check it out. And the question comes from GVM-E2P. Is that a robot name? Is the PVC pipe food grade? That would be a little bit like asking your bartender when he brings you a pint to ask if the, the whole bar is food graded. The shed is not food graded, the pup is not food graded, but the beer lines touching the beer is food graded. All PVC pipes are not food graded, but they are not touching the beer, so it doesn't matter. Question number two. Question number two comes from a video which I forgot to write down what, but I will link to it, but it's from a video about making yeast starter. This is from Justin Moore, 3870. That sounds like a yeast, doesn't it? Hey doc, when making a yeast starter, does temperature control matter? Should it be constant or is room temp fine? Well, room temp is fine, especially when you're using a magnetic stir plate. Even if the temperature in the room will drop a little, it doesn't mean that the, the yeast will drop out because the stir bar keeps it in suspension. Would the temperature drop too much, fermentation could take longer or even stall, and you could use a thin heating mat between the Emeyer flask and the, the stir plate or even a heat belt or put in the chamber because you can push the temperature up a little bit without risking off flavors. You could get off flavors in the starter but with the can't in the starter so it doesn't really matter. And a starter goes really quickly when you have a magnetic stir plate 
air rating, keeping the gist in suspension and also when you can push up the temperature, it goes super fast. But the short answer, you will be fine in room temp. I added some extra lul lul. It's a Swedish saying. But yeah, question number three. Mm. I'm waiting for question number three. Yeah, shoe is up and about. Let's hit it. So I combined two questions because I thought they were like similar. This is from um, one of my no shill brewing videos about why I don't use no shill containers, like new shill cubes. I suggested in that video just leaving it in the kettle, cooling down overnight. So first question from DC Grace. Wouldn't too much headspace in the kettle cause problems in no-shield brewing? And from James O'Brien, are you concerned about oxidization using clean film as a lid in no-shield brewing? First off, I've seen people like putting clean film on the, uh, the wart surface. I don't do that. I have put clean film on top like to seal my fermenter better than just the lid, but that has nothing to do with oxygen or oxidization. It's just to keep nasties and bugs and dust out. You could even put a, a plastic bag and borrow your mom's strap on and like, make that really tight. The reason why I suggest just leaving it there is because you don't really have to worry about surface oxidization when leaving it overnight. The problem with no shield would be like splashing. And that's why you have seen when I use a container, like a keg grader fermenter, going hot into that fermenter and letting it cool down overnight in that. You have seen me perching that with CO2. With my fancy, I'm looking at it now, you can't see it. Using my fancy DIY soda streamy thingy here, it's a knockoff, cheap knockoff. I haven't made a single soda with this one, just my perching device. Does it make any sense? Like that surface on top is nothing to the amount, to, to, to the all of the surface when splashing. Hopefully it makes sense. Does it make sense to you, Shui? You can watch me. Next question. And this is also from uh, the No Shield Brewing and why I don't use cubes for No Shield beers. And this is from Sir Bartman1. Thank you. He's filling up his cakes with sanitizer and wondering if there will be enough pressure from fermentation to purge the cakes. Short answer, yes. From like 20 liters of 1050 wort, you would get 8 to 1200 grams of CO2. And that would be at room temperature like 400 to 600 liters would be enough to purge a lot of cakes actually. But please don't tell any vegans about the beer fermentation process. They are still busy collecting cow farts. And by the way, pick up the t-shirt. Next question. I know I had it in here somewhere. Sorry, final question for this video is for my how to clear beer with gelatin video and this is from Liam Bodell 318. Do you know the science behind why gelatin clears beer? Yes, I do. It can feel a little bit like magic, but I will leave the science for the, the lab doctor to explain that further. Gelatin isn't magic, it's chemistry. Gelatin molecules carry a positive charge, while the haze in the beer, proteins, tannins, polyphenols carry a negative charge. When you add gelatin, opposites attract. The gelatin binds to the haze particles, they clump together, get heavy and sink out of suspension. That's why a cloudy beer suddenly drops bright, not by magic. Science! Thank you so much for the, the science part. I do have some questions left for an upcoming episode. And I also say the buns question about pressurized fermentation for yet another Q&A about that. Exciting to have any more questions or topics that you think we should talk about. 
let me know down in the comments now i need to record a patreon video do have a beer waiting if you're interested in the agula brewing system which is an awesome small batch brewing system there's cheers see you in the next one magic ha huh. i told you it's science okay maybe just a little magic nobody's gonna know you're gonna know nobody's gonna 